What is today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'll give people a hot second to jump in here. Welcome in. Um, my name is Keely Martinez. I am a presidential diamond leader within doTERRA and I just can't be more obsessed with this group. Um, I have to tell you guys, this Golden Platinum group is one of the best groups to be a part of. Um, I don't know if you guys know that or not, but hey girl. But seriously, you guys are surrounded by the people who are just doing all the things, who are in the grit, in the trenches, sharing their ideas, cheering each other on. This group is super inspirational to me, um, even as Presidential Diamond. So, hey, hey. So welcome in. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit different. I've caught a few of these, so I definitely haven't caught, caught every single one, but what I do love about this is everyone's giving kind of their own two cents on like what has worked for them, how they've broken through barriers in this business, and that's really what it's about is developing you. So um, good morning. I am gonna be doing this a little bit different. I'm actually gonna do more of a Q&A. If you follow me on social, so I do social media. Um, I have an Instagram account, a little Instagram account called Essentially Obsessed. And then I um, have my Facebook brand page that is essentiallyobsessed.me over here. So I normally do Q and A's. Um, they've been a little bit more random just with summer hours and having my little ones home. But um, I like to do live Q&As because I'm here to serve you. I'm not here to serve me. I want to add value to your guys' businesses. I want to help you break through some of these blocks, some of these belief blocks, and get you guys to the next level. So I might be looking a little bit this way because I actually have the graphic that I posted this morning um, where I just asked you guys, what, what are you struggling with? What's going on in your business? Hi. Hi, guys. Um, so I went through and I asked you guys this morning to comment, like, what are you needing at this point in your business? So I'll give you a quick synopsis of my journey just so you guys have a reference point. So I started my doTERRA business about four and a half years ago. I got my oils and about three weeks into it, I just couldn't shut up about them. So I started sharing and within 12 months, I built a diamond organization in my hometown. Now this is kind of a misconception that people have about my business is that I built it all online or that I had an online presence before doTERRA. I did not. Um, I actually, my four silvers who qualified my diamond are all here in my hometown. I did weekly classes, if not um, two classes a week. I did, I probably enrolled the most people at my local Starbucks because I love just a little intimate coffee date. So that's um, kind of my story is like I hit diamond super fast, but then you guys, I got stuck. Um, I sat at diamond for about two years and I know you may be thinking like, oh boohoo, I would love to be stuck at diamond. But this is the thing is as human beings, we all desire to progress in this business, right? So hey boo. Um, so I was wanting to move forward, but what I realized after I kind of finally broke through this, and it took me two years to break through this, was I had to develop myself. So there was a lot of learning curves, a lot of leadership learning curves through those two years. And then in, what was it, February of last year, we hit Blue Diamond. And then in July, we hit Presidential. So we literally, like, once you hit those breakthroughs, you will be amazed at how quickly things can change in your business, okay? So I'm gonna go through some of these questions. If you have questions, I'll do a live q and I'm gonna, I have an hour carved out for you guys today. So I will be in here for about an hour, but we'll go through some of these questions that um, some people who may be in here or may not um, had, and then we'll, we'll kind of dive into more of a Q&A. So I know, suck a diamond, right? Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So, okay, Robin asked, how do you support the new Premier and Silvers that are working their butts off to get to a place where they can support their family and go all in? So really at the core of this is where's their belief level at? Now this is something that I look at personally is when you strip away all of your people, so anyone who you've sponsored underneath their organization, what level are they at? Have you helped them to get there? Which is an incredible part of our business. But 
you can't, if you guys are familiar with the success, um, the share success, the, the rank summit, you know that every time people are rank advancing, they're conquering a new belief, right? So I'm actually going to pull it up real quick. So that way I have it to reference, but, um, when people are getting to the next level, if you are sponsoring people underneath their organization for them to get to the next level, for you to get to the next level, which is what we do, right? Um, you have to understand that your their belief is going to be what they've built, not what you've built. So this is a really, really important understanding with this business is even though you may have somebody underneath your organization who's sitting at a premier or sitting at a silver, where is the, their true belief level at? So, um, and you need to meet them there. Even though their rank may say platinum, or not platinum, but may say premier or silver, if they really have only built their organization to elite or they've only enrolled a couple people, you need to make sure you're meeting them where their belief level is. So the first belief is always in the product, right? So understanding that, that the product comes first and how are they using their oils, all of that type of stuff. So you're developing them because our rank advancement is not a reflection of you know, okay, you've been at this rank for so long, so now you're ready to go to the next rank. It's it's a reflection of our belief in ourselves, our belief in our product, our belief in this opportunity, and our belief in where we're going. So if I have somebody who's stuck at premier and or silver and who's wanting to say reach that level of, you know, four to five thousand dollars a month or higher, and again it depends on where somebody's needs are, right? So if somebody's wanting to look at replacing their income, is where is what is their vision with what they're doing? Are they going out and teaching every single week? Are they doing the things you guys the, the core foundation of what we do is not ever going to change. So I still show up and I teach people, whether it's online or in my hometown, we show up and we teach and we support. But the reason why I was able to hit Diamond so quickly is because I knew I could go to Diamond. So I want you to reflect on that. And I want you to reflect on, do you feel like getting four silvers underneath you is hard? Do you feel like that's a really far goal? Do you feel like that's a lot of work? Or do you feel like, oh, that's easy? I can help four silvers because guess what? I've gotten to silver so I can show four people how to do what I've done. So first off, it is your mindset. And this is the number one thing about this business. If you don't wrap your head around how much work you're going to do on your own mindset, you're gonna stay stuck. And that's you, that's your premieres or that's your silvers, is where's your mindset at? So, and with the mindset follows the actions, right? So you need to have your mindset work dialed in. So do they have a vision of where they're going? If they don't, I would sit down with them and say, okay, where do you want to go with doTERRA and who do you want to attract into your business? So I, mine and myself and my team and my upline were very big into the laws of attraction because they're working whether you want to recognize it or not. I promise you. It's like the law of gravity. Like you can say, oh, it's not working, but if you jump off of a three-story building, you're going to fall, right? So the laws of attraction are working whether you believe it or not. So you need to see where your leader's mindset is at. Are they feeling like, I'm never going to get there. It's so far away. Every class I hold is blah, blah, blah. Like, is it that negative kind of draining energy behind their business? Or is it that excited, I have this huge opportunity at my fingertips and I get to do this and I get to find the right partners and I get to dive into this work and my long-term goal is to be home. My long-term goal is to be able to step away from my full-time job. So you need to check their energy with where they're at because they will be attracting whatever they are focusing on. What we focus on expands. And again, whether you want to recognize it or not, that is exactly what's happening right now. So if somebody is quote unquote working their butt off, but they are not truly their belief level in themselves, in the product, in the opportunity, and what they're creating is lackluster, then that's why they're getting what they're getting. So I know that sounds a little bit maybe woo woo to some of you guys, but that truly is why people continue to get what they get is their belief level in themselves. And don't get me wrong, my belief level has, you know, slid and, and come back up. Belief mindset work is not like a, okay, I read this book, mindset work is done. It's not a box to be checked. It is a practice to focus on every day. 
So even for you guys as top leaders in this company, are you focusing on your practice every day? This is something that I cannot emphasize enough to you guys, to my team, that your mindset work has got to be a top priority. And this can come in any form. This can be YouTube, I mean, Tony Robbins. This can be um, Abraham Hicks if you're into it. This can be, you know, any type of YouTube, which is free. It can be Audible, so downloadable books. You know, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, Girl, Wash Your Face is kind of the latest one by Rachel Hollis. Like there are so many self-development mindset books that you can download on Audible. Um, or podcasts, you know, some of our top incredible leaders do podcasts. If you guys don't follow Whole Fit Talks by Ange Peters or All Rise Up by Alice Nichols, you know, there's incredible podcasts out there. Um, other ones that I love is She Did It Her Way. Um, what's the other one that I've been... The life coach, um, the life school, life coach. Mm, I think it's the life school. Um, anyways, my point is, is that it has to be a daily practice. So every morning when I'm getting ready for the day, I'm listening to something. This is training my brain. This is a really important part of my day. And I can tell you when I'm not doing it, um, I notice it in the way that I respond to things. I notice it in the things that I'm attracting into my life. So Anyway, it's kind of long-winded, but you need to see where their mindset is at because they can be doing all of the work in the world. They can be putting all of the classes on the books. They can even be enrolling all of the people, but if their vision and their mindset around the opportunity is lackluster, they're not going to attract leaders. They're not going to, their business isn't going to hinge forward. And so yes, they will be doing all of the things on paper and in person, but it's a reflection of their mindset. So, oh yeah, life school. Thanks, Alicia. Okay. Um, how do we inspire leaders who aren't showing up? You don't. <laughs> um, you, you can't inspire someone um, or quote unquote motivate someone to show up who this isn't a priority for them. So this is a really incredible analogy that actually my personal coach gave me because I feel the same way that you guys feel. I feel like, okay, I have all these new people coming into my organization who are telling me they want to do this business. They're excited to do this business. They, they see the opportunity. They love their products. They're telling me all the things and I'm sitting over here spooning, which we all do, right? So um, when it comes to inspiring or motivating people to show up, all you can do is be an example. So you can continue to show up and teach classes. You can continue to show up and do mentoring calls or show up and do group mentoring or be visual to your team, especially if your team isn't all local. It's really important to use platforms like Facebook to be visual to your team. Show them what you're doing. Show them what you're working on, right? So make sure that you, you are personally showing up. And this is the thing is, so the analogy is, is you're a shop owner, okay? Like a, a, a clothing shop owner. You have people coming in and out of your shop and your job is to kind of hold open that dressing room door. Now you're gonna have people who come in and who look at a mannequin and think, oh my gosh, that outfit is exactly what I've been looking for. I'm so excited. They try it on and it for sure doesn't fit. <laughs> and they put it back. And those are the people who come into your business and they may never even say they wanna do the business, but they're the ones who um, might say, yeah, I'm interested, but they really just don't ever do anything, right? Like we all have those. And then you're gonna have people who come in and try on the outfit and it's probably maybe one size too small, but like, you know, maybe if you've had a good like stomach flu, you can fit into the pants and you know, you wear them once or twice a year. Like the, the, that's that outfit. And you know, if you're a woman, you get that. So we've all had that where it's like, okay, I'll buy it. But like, it's definitely not my everyday wear. And those are the people who are truly the ones who like pop in, do a class or two, maybe enroll a friend here and there. Um, but they'll tell you they want to do the business, but really they don't, they don't actually conceptually wrap their head around what it takes to do this as a business. And then you're going to have the people who come in try it on and they're like, this is it. I love it. This is exactly what I was looking for. So, um, 
And those are the people who are your business partners. And you guys, I have personally enrolled, I think over 650 people into doTERRA in my four and a half years. And I will tell you, that's probably the hardest learning curve that I personally have gone through is learning how not to fall in love with someone's potential. And that's a big one. It is because you love this business so much. You see what you can create. You see other people creating it. You know that we're out there, right? But it is seeing people come into your organization and having them tell you all of the things and not do the action behind it. So my my advice behind this is fall in love with people's action. If you are not creating action items for your time, you need to do that now. You need to implement that into your mentoring, into how you run your business, especially with your leaders. So my biggest piece of advice is somebody comes into your organization and says, oh my gosh, Nicole, I want to do this as a business. I'm so excited. Your first stop is like, okay, let's get a class on the books. I'm going to come over, I'm going to help you teach, or if they're not there, I'm going to give you all the tools, I'm going to show you how to teach people. I want you to watch this YouTube channel and learn, you know, and learn how to teach a class. I want you to, or I'm going to come over, let's, you know, let's kind of put together your list of whoever you want to invite, I'll walk you through some simple ways on how to invite them, and I'll come over and I'll teach it. So... But this is the thing is if she never calls you and says, hey, I want to put that class on the books or you, sh you maybe you say we're going to meet up on Thursday and she calls you or texts you Thursday morning. It's like, hey, it's not going to work. I'm so sorry. And listen, things come up, but you guys both know that if this is a priority, then they're going to show up. They're going to do it. And I just don't want you guys to because it, there's a lot of heartache around that, right? It's like falling in love with someone's potential you know, pouring all of your time and effort and resources into them and then turning around and having them, it just, it just isn't a priority. And it's nothing personal. That is something else that, that I've learned through this business is it's never a personal, like, attack on you. It's, it's a belief level in themselves, nine times out of 10, to be honest, of looking at anything network marketing and thinking like, I could, I can't do that. Like those, those diamond leaders or, you know, those gold leaders or those platinum leaders that they, they, you know, they have something special. I couldn't do that. So, um, this is one thing that I have done before is I have turned around and I have, um, I've purchased the leadership magazine for a few people and I've sent it out to them or I've given it to them. And I said, listen, like I know you and I keep talking about you doing this as a business and I cannot wait for you to decide to show up. That being said, I just want you to flip through this and I want you to read five to 10 of these little articles. I want you to look at the different walks of life from people who have hit this high rank of diamond. Um, and I want you to reflect on if that is something that, that you can see in yourself. Because if it's not, I and I almost have had to give permission to people to tell me like, yeah, this isn't for me. And it's not necessarily that, that disappointment, but it is that releasing of energy for you guys as a leader. Stop beating your head against the wall hoping somebody wakes up and is inspired. Could it happen? Yeah, sure. But is it going to? Probably not. You will notice a theme throughout all of these mentoring sessions that myself and other presidentials are doing and blues are doing is probably I would say 90% of us did not have somebody above us saying like, hey, you should build this business. Go do it. You're going to be great at it. We all just saw this opportunity as well as probably many of you guys saw this opportunity and were like, okay, I'm going to do this because I know that there are people out there on their knees praying for natural health, right? Like how many people are sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? So you know that you have a product that can serve people and how many people are out there praying for financial health, are living paycheck to paycheck, barely getting by, but they work their ass off. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> they work their butt off. Um, and they show up and they, they're driven by helping people. You guys were out there, but if you are spending all of your time with somebody who does not give to, I need to watch my language in here, doesn't care about showing up for you, you need to move on energetically and you need to just hold space for them. If you show up, great. If not, 
that's totally fine. I'm gonna find somebody who wants to show up. So once you personally release that, guess what happens? You open the floodgates for the right person to come in. So I'm gonna share with you guys something that I've done and something that I do with my team personally is this. So this little list is what I call my dream client list and my dream leader list. If you have not sat down and written out the characteristics of your dream client and of your dream leader, I cannot encourage you more to sit down and write it out. You guys, this is a powerful list. I read it probably, I would say two to three times a day. And I don't just read it through, you know, and read it out loud and, you know, kind of affirm it. What I do is I close my eyes and I feel the emotions of how it feels to have that person show up in my life. That is the power. Your emotions, your energy behind how you feel around this list, around these people who you are attracting into your organization is what will attract them into your organization. That's the key. So make your list, go through it. I don't even know where I got off on that tangent. Oh, inspiring leaders. So don't keep doing you. Actually, the people who inspire the most amount of people are the people who are doing the work that inspires them, right? So like if I show up and I'm doing the work that inspires me, guess what happens with my team? They, they all of a sudden have permission to do work that inspires them. But if I'm sitting back thinking I have to go into management mode and I need to mentor them even though there's not any reason to mentor them, I don't mentor people just to get on the phone with them. I, I personally don't find it a valuable use of my time. Um, I mentor people who are in action and who need help um, but I don't necessarily have like scheduled mentoring calls with people just because you need to be in action. Once you're starting to enroll people, then we will connect in, we'll go through structure, we'll go through all the things. But I do things like this for my team. I'll jump on a live. Right now we're all going through the summer success um, challenge that Jessica and Bree did. So like we're all doing it together. I'm in it with them. So. Um, I guess my point is, is you stay in inspired action and you'll watch the right people flow in. Okay. Okay. And next one. Um, so thankful for this, uh, mentoring this summer. I'm looking forward to going back to many of these. Okay. So she's saying that she's been dealing with some personal health stuff this summer. Um, but she's needing to personally show back up to her doTERRA crew to inspire and re rejuvenate them. Thinking of mapping out a plan and organizing my videos and becoming more present on all facets. Any advice or guidance to refocus period of my life would be so welcome. Okay, so um, this is the biggest thing with this level. Your energy sets the tone for your team. You check out, they check out. And I see it in my organization, I see it in other people's organizations, but you always set the temperature. If you are showing up, you're excited, you're doing all the things, guess what? Your team is gonna show up, they're excited, they're gonna do all the things, or you'll attract the new people who are excited to show up. But if you, and obviously, you know, this person has had some, some heavy stuff going on in their own life, but you have to realize that you are the key. People are looking at you guys as their leader to guide them. You're the one with the vision right now. So something that's really important to me with my platinums and my diamonds is for them to hold the belief for their silvers and their golds and you know the, the women underneath them who are rising, right? So like there, I would say around gold is when your belief in what you can create in doTERRA shifts, right? Like silver is incredible, don't get me wrong, but gold is where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, feeling that I finally am starting to get a little bit of some leadership going in my organization. And I actually have this organization who's looking at me to guide them, right? So gold is the level where people's belief in this opportunity really starts to hinge, okay? So if you have premiers and silvers underneath you, it is your job to hold the belief and to show them what is possible in this business. So that does mean you showing up. That does mean you going in lives. That does mean you holding team trainings or, or team Zooms so they can feel that energy and, and absorb that excitement about what they can create with doTERRA, okay? So that's what I would do, is I would create a schedule where you're showing up for your team. 
Um, okay, how to attract builders who want to run with you and see the long-term long-term vision versus those people who have one class and fizzle out and give up. So I kind of touched on this already. Um, I think really, Londa, the biggest thing is to be inspired yourself. And you guys, this is the cool part of doTERRA specifically in my eyes. I have a lot of friends who do other network marketing companies and the way that they have to run their business is very much in a certain box. Like you can't really um, venture outside of, of a specific structure. Like one of my really close friends is a high up coach in Beachbody and she really has to hold her challenges on Facebook. It's, you know, every 30 days, it's always kind of the same rinse and repeat, right? So for me, um, I love the fact that with doTERRA, we can tweak it up, right? Like we can teach a class based off of whatever we is inspiring to us. Now, if you're out there teaching your classes, um, I don't know, maybe some of you guys have heard this before, but I actually started teaching my classes at a local wine bar because I personally thought, you know what, I didn't want this to be like a at home party type of thing. I wanted it to be more of like a mom's night out. So I was a mom of, you know, I, I still am a mom, but at the time I just had my first daughter. She was a tiny baby. And so the idea of being able to get out of the house, not be mom, uh, not be a wife and not be an employee at my corporate job felt good to me. So I want you to sit back and reflect on what feels good to you in this business. When you do that, you will attract the right people. If you are trying to do your one-on-one -on -one class because this is how your upline taught you to, don't get me wrong, like the basics, the, the foundation of our classes is all pretty much the same. But for me, I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be if somebody invited me to come to that class, would I go? And that's something to reflect on, especially if like your class attendance is low or you're, you're trying to rinse and repeat the same class and it's not really hitting it. Um, you know, a few things that I've liked to do lately is I switch up the name of the class. Like instead of doing a make and take, we do remedy bars now, like, or we do emotional bars. So like we just switch up the names where it makes it feel a little bit fresh, a little bit new, a little bit exciting and we're excited about it. So tweak it up, but, um, you are going to attract the builders into your life because you're seen in your own inspired lane. You're not looking at everyone else, which the comparison trap in this business is incredible and I've fallen into it many times, but you have to realize that there are so, thousands, thousands of people out there searching for you, not me, searching for you because the way you show up, because your experiences with this business, with these oils, that is what they need. And so if you don't truly believe that, if you don't truly believe that there are thousands upon thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people searching just for you, I want you to put that into your affirmations. I want you to feel that. I want you to feel that magnetic energy of somebody who is searching for you and, and literally like your souls are just attracting each other. This is what happens, right? Oh, the comparison game is insane, Aubrey. And this is the thing with comparison is everything's kind of like glazed over, especially with social media, right? Because you only see the highlight reel. You only want to show the highlight reel. Like that's what social media is. I'm not going to follow someone who's showing me like their dirty laundry and their kids screaming at each other. And But I have that, you guys. I have three kids who are at each other all the time. You know, I have dirty laundry. I, I have days where I'm a hot mess. I have days where I'm wondering how this is going to come together. I'm having to have critical conversations that I really don't want to have, but I know it's necessary. So, you know, everyone has their things is what I guess I want to encourage you to realize. But if you're just looking at social media, you're only getting the highlight reel, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't live in that energy. I have shit, but I have stuff. <laughs> but... I also, I live in the energy of being super grateful and gratitude alone, living your life in gratitude, taking small pauses throughout your day and picking a few things. Tony Robbins, this is something I listened to YouTube probably about three years ago and this is a habit that I've created for myself is every single morning I wake up and I think of three things that I'm super grateful for. Um, and I just hold that energy for a few minutes. It doesn't need to be this like long drawn out meditation. Would I love to? Yes, but do I? 
not really. So it really is just a few minutes before my feet hit the ground. I just put my hands over my heart and I just really focus on the things that I'm so incredibly grateful for. And like being able to, to be an influence in this group is something that I'm super grateful for. You know, I, I, I am you, I was you, I was sitting at goal. I wanted to move forward and you know, it's just the taking one step after another each day. But I really do live my life in gratitude. I am so grateful that you guys, the opportunity we have this day and age, like I think about network marketing, let's think about it like 15 years ago. What was, what did network marketing look like 15 years ago, right? Like it was literally the like headset, smile and dial, you have your list, you're, you know, it's kind of like that, that schmoozy type of like network marketing. But now with the opportunity of social media, now with the opportunity of, uh, you know, just truly showing up and doing more, I would say attraction marketing than like go for the no and like, you know, I'm all for a good GoPro book, don't get me wrong, but my vibe is way more, you know, I will be here when you're ready. I will not hunt you down. I will not be knocking on your door even though you told me no. Like I tell people I'm here. I will still be doing doTERRA in five years. I will still be doing doTERRA in 10 years. When you are ready and you need oils, I am here, right? So. Um, I just think of how much opportunity we have this day and age, not only with being able to build our businesses, but also with being able to have access to education, resources, mentoring. Like I was YouTube taught. Think of how much a, a, of a critical tool YouTube was for my business. Think of how much a critical tool Facebook lives are for your business right now. Like, this is the thing, this is, we have so much opportunity sitting at our fingertips that if you are telling yourself a story that this isn't working or that you're stuck or that it's hard, you need to reframe your story. You need to reframe what your energy is around your business and know that they, you can create this any way, shape or form that you want to create it. You have the same opportunity that I have. You have the same opportunity that the girl next to you, above you, below you has. And you also have to realize with comparison that there are thousands of people who are sitting below the rank of gold, who are looking at you guys as golds and platinums and thinking, I just wanna get there. I just wanna do what she's done. I just wanna be there. How has she done that? That is so incredible. Like. Flip it on its head. If you're looking at diamonds, blues, or presidentials and thinking like, oh my gosh, it's so long until I get there, look behind you. Look at how many people are looking at you, not only your team and your organization, but how many people doTERRA wide are looking at what you've created and thinking, I just wanna get there. So my advice with that is stay in gratitude. Okay, um, let's see here. Strategy to solidify rank and hit your rank organically without having to buy in if that can ever happen. Anne Marie, it can, my dear. So, um, strategies. This is what I look at in my personal business. So, when it comes to hitting, hitting your rank organically, um, I feel like we need to do a better job, um, especially, I try to emphasize this, but we need to do a better job of glorifying the solidifying phase, right? Like how many of you guys have hit a rank, you know, maybe it's an incredible promotion month. You've hit that rank and you're like, I've gotten there. And then the next month you're like, oh shoot, <laughs> now I need to solidify this. There is so much incredible work that goes into solidifying a rank. So it's two different energies. Energy of ranking up is all hands on deck, everyone's excited, everyone's going, for the most part, everyone's doing the things, right? Like it's it's exciting to rank up because normally when you're ranking up, your leaders are ranking up, right? So there's a lot of excitement behind that. The solidifying energy is now the work. This is the true work and this is where you need to get bodies into your organization. Now that was my goal a year ago in July, we hit presidential for the first time. Um, with a buy-in, obviously. So it was it was that that exciting that that momentum. I actually took my sixth leg was a premiere. Keep in mind a premiere with a silver, 
underneath her and a premiere underneath her. So like two legs, so a very hefty premiere. And then we had the third leg that we were building out. So um, I took her from premiere to platinum, but I knew that it was going to take at least a year to solidify this rank with both of us working. So my goal was to get enough bodies underneath these, you know, each of these elites where that rate, that volume was starting to flow in organically and get the right bodies underneath there. So as far as hitting organically, a lot of it is the foundation of what we're doing is actually helping people. And that to me, that work is the best work in the world. So glorifying the solidifying, glorifying the solidifying phase, um, there needs to be a lot of pride in that. And that is the true work. Anyone can throw together promos and, and BOGOs and do all the things to get to the rank, but the true pride for me is seeing my team a year later, last month, hitting organic presidential. Seeing all of my leaders, their leaders, all of it coming together because the, of the work we've done for the last year, right? So um, did that premiere build that leg or did you really build it out for present? We built it together. So this is something that um, I also want you guys to check your energy around because this is something that I've fallen into, my leaders have fallen into, is feeling like, oh, well, I'm doing this by myself or I'm building this for you and kind of having that, that, energy of, I don't want to just give this to people, um, which is an interesting energy in my opinion of, you know, having a leader and believe me, you guys, I've had leaders who are not leaders. They just happened to enroll in my organization at a really good time. And so I have built a lot of their organization, but this is the thing is I would have never been, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for that person, even if they hold a hundred PV order, they're a blessing to my business. And I build this business not because I want this rank or this title or even this paycheck, but because I want to impact other people's lives. I want other moms out there to know that these incredible tools exist, to know that they don't have to stay up at night with a crying baby like I was, to know that you can feel empowered with your health to know that you don't have to run to the doctor for every little thing, especially when it comes to our kids, right? To know that, you know, if, if your little one's, you know, emotions are high, that you have tools at your fingertips. I can't tell you how much I feel that there are so many moms out there waiting and hoping and praying and not even knowing that this option exists. I am a missionary of that. I cannot stop doing this work. If I do, I'm letting all of them down. And so that's why every single day I show up for this work. That's why I love being able to do this work because I know I'm able to empower other people to make better choices, to make a choice that in five years from now, they're gonna look back and think, oh, I'm so glad I bought those oils. Like I look at how my children's health is. I look at, at the choices my five-year-old makes with her oils and I know where I am directing her future and I know that I can do that for other women so I think it's really really important to not hold that energy of oh, I'm building this for somebody else but I'm doing this because I love this work and if that happens to bless somebody else you guys I've probably blessed so many people financially through building my business. But you know what? I don't know what's going on with their life. I don't know what they're handling or what they're dealing with. And who am I to turn around and say that they're not deserving of it? It's my business. I'm the one who wanted to be diamond. I'm the one who wanted to be blue. I'm the one who wanted to be uh, presidential. So I think it's really important to check your energy and check your ego too, because you don't, you just don't know. You don't know what's going on. And if it, your goal is to get to diamond, it is your goal. It is not, it does, it does not need to be your leader's goal. And would it be nice to have four incredible silver leaders as you're building this? Of course, of course we all pray and hope for the leaders who just want to show up and do the things. But if you are hinging your next rank off of having the right people in the right places and having everything look perfect, you will stay stuck and stagnant in this business. You just will. There is, I hit diamond with 
two incredible silver leaders who are now two diamond leaders on my team. I also hit diamond with two silver leaders who are now, one's an elite and one's a premier. So I have a diamond now underneath that elite and then I have a incredible platinum underneath that premier. So I have never hinged my business off of my leaders deciding to show up and do this business. I still do the work and I find new people. If you don't want to do this with me, I'm sad for you because there's a huge opportunity sitting at your fingertips that you are missing. The, you're missing the most abundant, the most joyful work that really you could do. Um, and that's what I'm sad for. I'm not sad for your paycheck. I'm not sad for my paycheck. Because I, it, it will always flow in. There's more than enough. But I'm sad for them. I'm sad for the people who think that they are only here on this earth to work a 9 to 5. That they are only capable of showing up and walking through life and reacting to life instead of creating. So, oh, hey, babe. Hey, Jess. Um, hey, Steph. So... I just, I want you guys to know that your next rank doesn't hinge off of your leaders. It hinges off of you deciding to go to the next place. And so, I think my point was, my platinum leader, my six leg, we solidified and we did it together. We're partners. We're business partners. And, you know, whether that means I'm bringing in people, she's bringing in people, she's supporting people, it doesn't matter to me. And what matters to me is that I look at her and I think, you know what, I have a business partner for life in this business and she's incredible and she was willing to literally get launched and that was a conversation if you are going to take somebody from you know a, a rank and push them to the next rank I can't encourage you more to sit down and have a conversation with them of listen this is what this is gonna feel like right because this is the other thing that happens say you're sitting at gold and doTERRA launches something and you're like, okay, I have four legs roughly ish, right? And I'm going to go, a lot of people go gold to diamond, right? Because you get that extra premier bonus, which is incredible. But a lot of people tend to go premier to diamond. And what happens is you're normally launching that fourth leg, like you are skyrocketing them um, real quick from maybe elite, maybe premier to silver. So what I can't encourage you more to do is to sit down and to have a conversation with that leader and say, listen, I am going to launch you to this rank, and, but what I want us to focus on together is to sit down for this next, whether it's you know three months, six months, nine months, a year, and I want to look at really solidifying this rank. So this is what's gonna happen is you'll hit this rank this month. Um, we're gonna do all the work. We're gonna make all the magic happen together, but what I want to focus on is next month, we're going to focus on you getting to premiere by yourself or you getting, you know, make the goal because then what happens if you don't do that, then there's a disappointment, right? Of like, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not back at my rank. And that expectation can really take the wind out of people's sails, right? So you want to make sure that you're setting the expectation that this is what we're doing. We're, we're solidifying this this month, right? We're, we're, we're getting the bodies under your organization. So, um, when would you start your diamond leg? I'm gold, but feel like I might be slacking because I haven't started my diamond leg yet. Um, I would not start your diamond leg until your platinum is organic, if it were me. Um, and, you know, I have one of my diamond leaders in here and she'd probably agree with me, right? So, like, you have got to make sure that your platinum is hitting because this is the thing is you also don't want to be bouncing between gold and diamond. That's a big swing in your paycheck, guys. Um, if you are solid platinum or maybe you have one or two weak spots in your platinum, then I would look at starting your fourth leg. Or if you meet somebody who you're like, oh, okay, like trust in your intuition with people. Um, granted, I've kept quite a few people on my front line who have done nothing. Um, yeah, solidify your platinum, you guys, because your platinum bonus plus your 1500 plus your unit level, that's a good paycheck. So I would solidify your platinum and then I would look at going for diamond. And yeah, I mean, because this is the thing is the diamond rank is an incredible rank. It's such a huge accomplishment no matter how you get there. But you also don't want to be like feeling like you're duct taping holes 
you know, you want it to feel like, okay, these three leaders are really solid or it depends on your three, core, your three core leaders that you already have. If you have three leaders who are really running their own businesses and super self-sufficient, then I would look at starting your diamond link, but I wouldn't necessarily do it until your platinum is hitting. Um, cause yeah, your platinum plus your 1500, that's a good bonus. So, okay, let me, we have about 15 minutes. Let's see here. Any other questions in there? Um, Annabelle asks, hi Keely, how do you schedule your time to do all you need to create for your brand from belly to belly interactions to post on Facebook, Instagram, website, blog posts? Oh, Annabelle. Um, so I do a thing called brain dumping every morning and, um, I've talked about this a couple times, but I do four quadrants. So I do doTERRA, I do my house, I do my family, and then I do myself. So every morning I sit down and I literally dump everything out of my brain. What is going on? Normally my doTERRA list is the longest. And then what do I need to do for my house? You know, like grocery shopping or cleaning or whatever. Um, what do I need to do for my house? What do I need to do for my family? You know, especially now that my oldest is starting kindergarten and all this stuff. Like we have a lot of stuff going on with our family. And then what do I need to do for myself? So then I go through and I circle my top three non-negotiables. Like those are things that are getting done first, right out of the gates. Um, and so as far as scheduling, it just depends. It depends on the week, to be honest. Like this last week and this week, I've been in creation mode because I'm creating something for my team. And so a lot of my time is actually blocked out. So I'm not available to my team. I'm not available to a lot of people. Um, this is actually a kind of a rare live that I'm doing because my time is very focused. I try to batch things too. So if I'm doing membership overviews, then I try to do like three or four back to back because then I'm in that energy of, okay, this is, you know, walking them through their kit, walking them through their needs, walking them through, you know, recommendations, making sure they have resources, making sure they're plugged into my private education. Like, all of the things, but I try to batch it together so it's not chaotic energy. So same with mentoring. If I'm doing any type of mentoring calls, then they'll be batched together on a certain day. Um, same with social media content. You know, I normally try to sit down and write out ideas of different things that have been kind of on my heart of things I want to share on social media. I take my pictures, I edit them. I, you know, I'll try to sit down and write out content if I have time to. Most of the time I end up doing it on the fly, but, um, yeah. So that's really how I keep myself organized. But this is the thing is there's always stuff left on my list. <laughs> I, cause I love the creative outlet that this business is. Like I love social media. I love being able to share with you guys. I love being able to share tips and tricks and hacks. And, um, I love being able to share inspiring things that, you know, this is a life that four and a half years ago, if you would have told me that I would be sitting here today, being able to do this, being able to feel a hundred percent me, I would have laughed at you. To be perfectly honest, I'd be like, yeah, right. Okay. Network marketing. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, the universe always has a way of guiding you and directing you. And what I have learned the most over this last four and a half years is to pay attention, pay attention to where you're being guided, pay attention to that inner voice that says, Hey, you guys aren't here by accident. You guys are not doing this business by accident. People are needing you to show up. And so trust in that, trust in that guidance. And you know, anytime I'm feeling stuck or in a rut with this business is I go back to why, like, why do I love this business? And I'm quickly reminded that this business is a gift that I am exactly where I'm meant to be. So. Um, I hope that that helps. Let's see here. Let's go through some of the questions in here. Um, I followed you for a while. I see how consistent you are. What would you tell someone who recognizes their weakness is consistency and how to get better at that? You know, Brooke, it's not necessarily, so like, it also has to be something you love. Like I love social media. So I love the community that I've created. I love being able to add value. It's like, that is something that I wake up and it's like on my list to do every single day. Cause I love it. But if it feels heavy to you, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere with it. And that's just the honest truth because your energy behind it. So like, 
I have one of my diamond leaders that she kind of stopped Instagram for a while because she was feeling like it was a little bit heavy to her. And then she started posting again, but her energy behind it was like, oh, I just need to get this out there. I just need to, I need to stay consistent with it. But it's just like, kind of just like throwing dirt at the wall, right? Like I just need to do it because that's what, I, that's what Keely's doing or that's what I know can help to build my business. Um, and the energy behind her posting was lackluster. So we sat down and I told her, I said, you know, when you're posting, I want you to post like you're having a conversation with a really good friend over coffee and like have that energy behind like, hey, this is just a tip that I use with my girls and this is something that I love. And like her energy behind her social media switched so fast and like enrollment started coming in from it. And so it has to be something you love if it's not and, and you're not consistent with it because you don't like it let's be honest, like we're never consistent with things that we don't like, right? So um, I think just figure out what you do like. What do you like to do? You know, maybe it is going out and getting into your local community and maybe you love teaching about essential oils and yoga or essential oils and self-care or, you know, maybe you want to connect in with um, daycares. I don't know. Just figure out what you do love, what lights you up, what you would do with doTERRA, if all of your financial needs were taken care of, like literally money didn't matter, but there was no compensation plan attached to doTERRA. That's a really good, I'm gonna say that again. There was no compensation plan attached to doTERRA, but all of your needs were taken care of. Like you didn't have to stress over any bills or anything. Um, how would you do your business? How would you pursue this? How would you share these oils with people? Do that. Okay, at what point do you turn to focus on strengthening your power three? I'm gold, not solid. I'm still at my $50 power three and some of my wonderful builders are down below my first and second line. Thanks, Keely. Um, so I would look at strategically asking people, uh, it depends on, on who's above them, but to see if anyone would go inactive and see if you can have them sponsor change. So like say you have a silver leader underneath a frontline person, that frontline person, I would ask them, and again, it depends on your relationship, it depends on all the things, you guys, so take this with a big grain of salt, but you can ask them if they wouldn't mind going inactive, so that way you can pull that team up closer to you. Now, verbiage behind that can vary, but something I would personally say is, you know, look, I'm I'm helping to support this whole team, um, you know, and you can even give them the option. If you want to build this as a business, if you want to pursue this, if you want to support the team that's below you, a lot of times that, that kind of <laughs> puts a little bit of fear in people of like, oh, I don't want to support anyone. I just want to sit back and get a paycheck. But if you want to support the team that's below you, then um, I'm happy to help you do that. But if not, I would really love to put somebody, you know, whether it's put somebody in that spot that is actually wanting to build the business or, you know, asking them if they wouldn't mind going inactive so that way you can move their, their enrollment. They can obviously, they would be a, a wellness advocate. So yeah, they can, they, after six months, you can get them sponsored somewhere else in your organization. So that's what I would personally do. Um, you know, I do have one of my platinum leaders who has one person sitting between her and her 1500. She gets her 50 and she has one person between her and her silver. And so I get it. Um, and those are just critical conversations. I mean, those are conversations that you have to have of, you know, um, asking people if they'd be willing to move. And if not, um, then it would be something that you'd be looking at possibly building out your fourth leg to start to structure that out. So, um, lots of critical conversations, unfortunately, but you know, if you don't have them, the answer is no. So I always refer back to what does it mean to be a wellness advocate? If they're enrolling people, if they aren't supporting the team below them, if they're not actively teaching, that is what you sign up for when you decide to be a wellness advocate, right? And so if they're not actively doing those things, sometimes it is just a gentle reminder of what it means from doTERRA to be a wellness advocate. Now, we can't strong arm anyone, but I, like I said, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So um, power three is pretty big. All of my leaders except for that one get their 1500. So, aw, thanks Christine. 
So do you message out to potential prospects or do you share and connect and let people who are looking for you naturally come to you? I let people come to me. Um, I'm thinking of creating a course for social media, especially for Instagram. Um, just because I feel like there's a need to understand how to do network marketing on Instagram. Um, there's a lot of intricacies in social media and how to do it properly where you're actually enrolling. So there's, this is an unfortunate side of of social media is you're gonna see a lot of like sponsored posts from people who are like, I enrolled 40 people from my couch and didn't do anything and you know, come and join my course. But like then you look at the back end and you guys can see who's enrolling. You go to our incentive trip here in the US or even in, in Australia, they have their own incentive trip. But you go into the incentive trip and you can see the people who are actually enrolling. You can see where they're on, where they're at in the qualifications for the incentive trip. So for me, I've, I've always been in probably, I would say the top 15 enroll, like in top enrollers in doTERRA from the US and Canada for the last four years. So I am feeling a pull to share that information with people um, on how I do what I do because after my first year of hitting diamond, a lot of that focus shifted and now probably 95% of my business is online. So I am, it is something that after I finish this project for my team, I will probably start working on that and launching it um, probably towards the end of this year. But you might be some, seeing something come out for me. So, okay, a few more questions. Uh, recommendations on how much time spent growing online when you have grown in the flesh. I'm super excited to grow online, but I haven't done it and have a fear of it being a time suck. Would you say 12 to 18 months consistent posts on Insta and Facebook before seeing consistent enrollments online? Yeah, see, this is like the stuff that I feel like needs to be in a course because it's there's so much more than just posting. Like you, there's so many more intricacies behind this that it's not necessarily posting, it's it's connecting in, it's getting it's talking to influencers, it's utilizing your your personal social media of people that already know and love and trust you and hinging that into a business brand page and adding value from that. And yes, adding value and posting is incredible. I would say probably around when I hit maybe about 5,000 followers on social, on Instagram is when I started to actually get personal enrollments from Instagram. So it does take some time. Um, but there's a lot of questions of like, how do you even get to 5,000 followers? And so, Again, we don't have time to dive deep into this. You can, um, you can, I'll create it. I'll just create, I'll create a course for you guys. So just hold tight, I promise. How long did it take you to build your brand on Insta to where you started seeing enrollments from there? Just answer that, Brittany. Um, I completely agree with that. How to get leads from Instagram. I love that. I love it. Okay. So yeah, I guess if you're catching the recording of this or if you guys are on here live, just comment below if it's something that you guys would be interested in. Um, I don't do anything halfway, so it will be a full course and it will be um, very content rich of how I run my, my brand, my business, and it, it'll transfer to really any network marketing, um, small business because nine out of 10 people are on social media. If you're not utilizing it, you're missing a huge opportunity. I enroll anywhere from 15 to 25 people on social media. So if you want to understand how I do that, I mean, the key thing that I will leave you guys with is it has to do with you. It has to do with who you are showing up. You can make all the pretty pictures in the world, but if your energy behind your social media, you showing up, you loving it isn't there, then it's going to fall flat, right? So, okay. All right, guys. Well, hold tight. Um, and I guess my, my piece of advice that I would leave you guys with is if you are looking into up-leveling your skill set, just make sure you're looking at who you're learning from. Because I have quite a few girls who have, have bought courses online, whether it's coaching courses or whether it is social media courses, and they end up just throwing their money at the wind because
because who they're buying from is not necessarily how they want to build their business. So you need to really evaluate, look at the back end of these courses that are being offered online. Look at how they're building their business. Is that a way you want to build your business? So, um, where do you usually put your courses or team trainings? Do you use Teachable? I don't use Teachable um, for the social media one. I probably will use, um, I think I might use um, Kajabi actually. So, yeah, you're so welcome. Anyone you recommend learning from now? For Instagram specifically? Or social media in general? Um, no, <laughs> you know, uh, there's not anyone that I've, I've personally seen that I'm like, wow, yeah, that's dialed in, to be honest. Um, there's a few other leaders who, who offer things, um, which is fine. Uh, and again, some of it's just like understanding the foundations. Um, yeah, no, not any that I've heard like raving reviews about. And again, that's why I feel like I'm being pulled to do something like that because I want something to be, wow, this changed my business. Online, right? Oh, Gary Vee, all day, every day. You can listen to Gary Vee. Gary Vee's, I mean, yeah, I guess he is kind of social social media. That's a good recommendation, Heather. Um, yeah, but not necessarily, I mean, he's not gonna sit down and walk you through like how to, how to post and, and when to post and you know how to edit pictures and how to do your branding and all that stuff so like these are things and if you have anything specific that you feel like I would love to learn this you can email me um don't friend request me on Facebook because I don't post anything on my personal Facebook you guys just go follow my brand page. So my brand page is essentially obsessed.me over here or Instagram is probably the easiest place to follow me at essentially obsessed. Um, but you can send me a direct message on here. You can email me. My email is just keely at essentially obsessed.me. Um, but like I said, it'll probably be about two to three months out and then I will give you guys something that packs a punch. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, Gary Vee is a genius, genius. If I ever need a kick in the pants, I go watch Gary Vee. So anyways, I'm going to pop off here. I have my little one home, so I'm going to go play with her. But um, I hope that this added value to your guys' day, to your business. I hope you're creating some big goals. You guys are going into convention and into the end of the year. Always really good volume months. So create a goal. Talk to your team. Create the vision. Cast the vision for your team. Um... And just continue to hold that belief for your team because they're they're relying on you to hold that belief. Until they're in your shoes, you need to continue to hold that belief. So you're welcome, guys. I sure do love you. We will chat with you guys later and have a good one. See ya.